all righty well today we're gonna start narrowing up this other wing hopefully get it most of the way done i got an easter dinner this afternoon at three o'clock so that kind of cuts into things but get done when i can and mom and dad are both going to be out of town for the week so the nice thing is i can just drop the planter here in the driveway unfold it and not have to move it every day so that's going to help things out a little bit um but since last week i kind of last when, when we did this wing i kind of focused more on these first two row units and the main lift wheel um this time around i'll get these three moved and then we'll kind of pick up and i'll do more on the transmission and these two row units and this lift wheel to kind of keep things a little different um and i tried looking up I looked on parts book i'll have to look in the actual manual and see if it gives it in the specifications but uh i tried looking up the length of an eight row narrow toolbar in a 6100 frame to get an idea of what i could do for lobbing off and shortening this one up and make it to a standard toolbar length for an eight row narrow and parts book doesn't list it so like i say i'm gonna have to look and see in my actual service manual because sometimes it's in specifications they list all your frames and all the widths so hopefully otherwise we're just gonna wang it um i've had like three or four guys say now just why don't i just add it add another row unit and make it a 10 row well a as far as i know john deere is the only one that's ever made a five row corn head and i've only ever seen two in pictures i've never actually seen one in person and the one that I saw was on a 44, 35, or whatever those goofy European combines were that they sold up in Canada. They were like a, they were like the 4400 series, but not American. Um, so you don't have a corn head you could run it with, or run behind it. The only way you can guarantee to make a 10 row work right because if you make it a 10 row not only is your corn head going to be off your cultivator is going to be off your sprayer is going to be off your applicator is going to be off everything's going to be off because nothing matches the planter um and you always want nine times out of ten i'm going to put it that way you always want your following tools to match to be divisible by the number of units on your planter so like a eight row planter you either need to run a two row head a four row head or an eight row head or a 12 row planter you need to run a three row head a six row head a 12 row head or you know and so on up the line and then obviously anything in between planting and harvest needs to match too because otherwise you're having guest rows and you're ending up off on passes and all sorts of dumb shit so that's why it's not going to be made a 10 row because everything i have is set up for four row which is going to go into eight um the only way you can make a 10 row planner work behind something that doesn't evenly go into 10 is if you run and there are guys that do this now there are guys that'll run 12 row planners and eight row heads and all sorts of stuff those guys are usually running that's why i said nine times out of ten those guys are running full rtk sub inch accuracy gps so that you can guarantee that on your next planter pass your two units in between planter pass or your rows in between planter passes are still going to be on 30 inches because yeah you're 30 inches down the toolbar but without full but without sub inch accuracy gps how are you going to guarantee that the row unit or that the pass or the row that this unit drops is going to be the same is going to be 30 inches from when you make your turn and it's dropping a row over here and if you're off two three inches on a row yeah it doesn't sound like much but anytime you, you're running down a row with a corn head and you have to start pulling a row into the head and you're leaning stalks over that's one more chance to be knocking ears off and then you're losing yield so that's why everything's got to be divisible by whatever you're planting with and whatever you're harvesting with it's all got to work out evenly so no 10 row we're lobbing the toolbar off so anyway i'm gonna get the forklift up here and start moving stuff and it's a nice chilly day out and we might be fighting a little bit of a breeze but it's still nicer well i shouldn't say that yesterday it was at least warmer but the only thing that's going to make this side a little different that can't be a factory there's no way that 
those welds do not match anything else on this planter. There's no way that's factory. That's a hack job of a weld if I've ever I wonder if this thing was Oh no, never mind. I think that's where the No, because the fertilizer tanks were down further. I wonder what would have been bolted there. If I didn't take anything off because the squeeze pump mounted right here. Huh. And there was one here too. Because the row unit was mounted right here. So I don't know what would have been here and what would have been here. Interesting. Anyway, I'm going to get the forklift up here and start moving stuff. Um, like I say, the only thing that's going to make this part different is I'm gonna have to cut this bracket off before I can move it down because obviously it's already welded on so anyhow I'll get after it and get done what I can here and then once like I say once I get to the transmission and we start moving down the line I'll we'll pick up from there that way you can see something a little different than what we did last week all right well things are definitely going a lot faster I got all three of these guys moved already um it only took me i don't know not quite not quite two and a half hours and that was with dragging tools out and getting set up and yada 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 so last sunday it took me all day just to move those four and we're halfway there already but uh like i said catch her starting off on the transmission for this video um i've already got it cut loose from all of the main drive lines this side was a little bit more stuck i had to that side i was able to beat apart with a hammer this side or this time uh the main drive shaft off of the wheel i had to beat apart with a hammer but it went and then the one going out to drive these two row units i actually had to get the torch out and heat it up why it was stuck to the shaft i don't know because there's really no rust it just it did a thing but we are ready to cut, cut the uh, transmission loose, and I've actually got to go get, get another extension for the impact. much nicer when you can reach every single thing impact.
transmission is the one that uh, you pull your ground speed off of from the monitor to your population calculation. That's what that wire is, and then it goes down to a reed switch that counts off the teeth on that gear. That's that gear sole purposes for reading that switch. But now, and this is the nice part about having the other side done already, as we just walk over here, whoops, almost tripped on the impact. And we want foreign. Yeah, basically, somewhere between four and a half and four and three quarter. We'll do. Yeah, we'll do four and a, four and a half off the row unit I already moved. some anti-seas on this drive shaft and we can put this side back together and set our gears because we know that side's all good so i'll get that done real quick and then i'm going to pop this row unit off because when i did that one when i did the first one on that side all we did was i just popped the chain loose and we let it hang that one I actually took the chain off pulled the row unit off and hung it back on the forklift back here it was so much nicer not having to work around it so that's what i do over here um, but we'll get this uh, bracket off and take it inside and we'll catch it at the mill slotting it out so that it'll go over this guy here okay so obviously I gotta hog this out to clear a where they wrapped a reinforcing strap around the back of the mainframe for where the tongue is um, and I gotta take out that chunk right there um, I'm not gonna get too carried away and set up on it and do all the math and yada 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 i need to take that spot out so we're just gonna eyeball it we're not building a rocket ship here um we're just doing it for clearance and it's gonna get welded up so and uh, not my tinted safety glasses i can't see shit in here that's better little slow going until you get a hole or until you get a slot hogged into it and then it goes pretty quick
there should about do it. And we gotta sneak back this way just a little bit. And just like that, we got a slot. Um, I wish I'd have done the other side. I did the other side similar, but I didn't. I used two different tools, and this was a lot faster and a lot easier doing it just that way. I should have done the other side that way. But anyhow, um, so that's slotted out. It fits, and then it needs to be an inch and an eighth down. Well, an inch and an eighth above the toolbar. So, um, measure down, clamp this block on here. This block will set on the toolbar. Not only does that set your height, but it's parallel to the edge of the bracket, or uh, perpendicular to the edge of the bracket. So, that's your 90 degrees. So, it'll make it set square on the toolbar. So, makes life a little easier. But with that, uh, should be good to weld it on. So, I'm going to go out and we'll get the paint ground off and get it on there and hopefully everything works all right let's see how ugly we can make this damn wind is not being very cooperative right now Okay, it's tacked. Now see if we can nail her down somewhat permanent. need a shop. You do this inside, you don't got to worry about wind.
Well, I tell you what, that right there really tested my patience. Not that I have a whole lot of patience to begin with, but that right there really tested them. I bet it took me 20 minutes to weld that bracket on. I ended up having to take cardboard and build a box to keep the wind off of it. And, and didn't, the welds didn't turn out too bad, but they're still embarrassing. That one's got... That one kept wanting to run down the bracket, so I, but I finally got it get stick good enough and I sanded it off and then that one and this one's not terrible. That one's not great, but it ain't going nowhere. So now we can put the unit back on. Okay, this guy's back on. We're at exactly 30, so we did a good job of welding that on there. Now we can move this lift wheel, and to do that, you pop that shaft collar loose, you can slide the drive shaft over because obviously you're gonna lose distance. And then we crack these L bolts loose because this one actually, the bolt goes over, goes down, and then comes in the bottom over there. And this, this, this wheel is a bugger to move, it really is. Um, and it's a bugger to get the bolts back in. But. same way on the other side the bolts are like 
rusted into the holes on the bottom. Well, actually it wouldn't make sense because right about here was where the fertilizer tank was sitting and I bet fertilizer ran down them bolts. But that's, I bet that's why it did it. prevent some of it. The other side here. We want to end up three and a half. Yeah, three and a half off the parallel bar there. Oh, and on another side note, something I found interesting. So you measure from the center of the frame, or from. I'm assuming that this cylinder's on center. Now there's really. Unless you could somehow string a tape measure down through all this shit and figure out where you're at on both ends. Um, but that cylinder's got to be center. Uh, if you measure off a of center, these row units are both 15 inches from the center of the planter to the center of the row unit. And then we're 30 inches down all the way. And then we're 30 inches down to, obviously, that third unit for right now. But... Um, this bracket on this side basically ended up right on the edge of that drawbar strap and on this one it kind of ended up more toward the middle of it and i've met i when i saw that it was going to do that i measured all over the place and everything says that all the row units are centered on the toolbar so apparently i don't know if it's got to do with the fold geometry or what but apparently this side of the drawbar is like a touch further in or that's just the way it ended up jigging or when they weld it together or whatever but yeah so anyway a little bit of because i saw that and i was like my god are these things not actually centered on the toolbar but i measured and everything says that all the row units are centered on the toolbar teeter get back from the road come on Okay, now this thing, like I say, these are no fun. You gotta go all the way down here. Three and a half. Three and a half. What happens if we 
set it down. The other fun part was uh, getting the bolt started again. Because the unfortunate part about clamping around the frame like that is once you draw the bolts up tight, they spring open. So getting them to do their thing again can sometimes be a chore. What I had to do on the other side is tighten them up a little bit because these the washers got to go down in these recesses. So I tried to tighten it up a little bit, hit it with a hammer, drop down, tighten it up a little bit more, hit it with a hammer, it drop down. All, that side went a lot nicer than the one on the other side. she be I got that last rug unit moved and I had to go to Easter dinner so I had to go do that and by the time I got back here we're pretty much to the point of just cleaning things up and getting everything put away um but I got a guy 
Well, the guy that I've been asking, they're getting all the information from off of a 16 row. He's got a bunch of seed tubes, uh, brand new Agco ones that he got with a 16 row. He's sending me one that I can put in it for now. Um, eventually, what I want to do to this thing, um, one spike closing wheel on every unit, drag chains on every unit, uh, bullseye seed tubes, Keaton seed firmers, and eventually down the line. But unless I get really, really lucky and find a set for cheap at an auction, it's going to be way down the line. I want to put a uh, single disc Yetter fertilizer openers on it, but for right now it was still cheaper. I have all the coulters, uh, scrapers, and the hose retainers. I have as much money and everything to do these eight as it would to be to put two new single disc openers on two units. So it was a lot cheaper going this route just to get things started. Like I say, eventually I want to have single disc fertilizer openers on it. Um, and eventually, and we're going to, tomorrow I'm going to mock, we'll mock it up. I'm going to throw both uh, fertilizer tanks on one side so we can get dimensions and figure out where everything's got to lay. Um, and eventually I want to put two more liquid tanks on it but i gotta find some off of a parts planter i thought i had a set found and i went and looked at them thursday and the damn end caps are all rotted out so but i got the brackets are good so if i can find up find a decent set of tanks off of a 5100 or a 6100 or that by the five and six thousand planter you use the same liquid tanks um so but i'm gonna put two more 90 gallon tanks so i'd have 360 gallon of capacity on here um but like i say tomorrow we'll throw two tanks on one side of the toolbar get it mocked up figure out where everything's got to lay because that's going to dictate how much room i need out here on the end to get the tanks mounted as to where i can lob the frame off and move our move the end of the frame in uh i figured out the the guy with 16 year old he, he uh, was looking at it today and he gave, sent me uh, pictures of how the squeeze pump supposed to mount and on these they actually have a a box that clamp or a bracket that clamps to the fertilizer toolbar it has that doesn't do anything on the main toolbar um it's just on this box up front so it's going to be really damn easy to replicate um and the the jack shaft on his has brackets that mount to the main toolbar but i think if i do it right I can um, build the jack shaft bracket and everything all into the brackets that the squeeze pump sets on and just have everything nice and compact. Uh, but I'm going to have to get a couple bearings because that's the squeeze pump is going to have to end up going right here somewhere because these are the sprockets that drive it. And the jack shaft has to be here because the jack shaft's got two sprockets that. Uh, go with these two for speed setting and then they got a bank of it's got a bank of like three or four sprockets here that goes with the two sprockets up on the squeeze pump and that's your that's your squeeze pump transmission so you got to have that jack shaft in there but where they have like two two and a half feet of shaft i think i can make it all happen in, in a shaft about yay long because basically all i got to do is come off of here to here and then jack shaft over and then up into the squeeze pump so it shouldn't be that hard to make all that happen in a relatively tight space. And then, like I say, the squeeze pump will end up right about here. So, tomorrow, like I say, we're going to mock up where the fertilizer tanks are going to set. And then when I go to put the two on that I got, they'll end up on the outside. And then the ones that I get, we'll put on the inside when and if or when i finally find them and then if the weather's decent we'll work on shortening a toolbar if the weather's well it's supposed to be decent out but i don't if, if it's windy we're gonna work on making a squeeze pump bracket but if it's not windy we'll work on shortening the toolbar 
because I kind of need to get the tool bar shortened so that we can get our marker arms set and I need to make new hoses for the marker arms but can't do that until the marker arms are where they need to be so we don't make the hoses too long which these guys are already too long because these go to that marker arm and they go right here this uh, shuttle valve block and they go up and they come up and they loop around and then they loop back around when all they need to do is go from there to there so i don't know i don't get why guys do that they go to rural king and they just buy a pre-made fucking ready fit hose that's 10 feet too long and then they curly cue it all up on the frame and it's like just go get the right shit made then you don't end up with crap like this And then you got that wad of stuff in the middle that I don't know what to do with. But anyway, I gotta get this thing out of the way so I can get dad's truck in the garage and then back it back up and we're gonna drop it the driveway so I don't have to have the tractor out to move it since I don't have to worry about people coming in and out of the garage this week so we can just sit here. So anyway, I guess that's progress for today so that's it for this one and we will catch you guys on the next one